Well, welcome to the Cobb Innovation and Technology Academy. I'm Dr. Tiffany Barney, and I'm the director of the Cobb Innovation and Technology Academy. So we're gonna begin our tour. When people come in the building, they typically come in these front doors. Behind me, these doors are locked, and that's for student safety, and then they'll either go to the left or the right. So we're gonna start our tour this way. This right here is our main corridor. So in this front, you'll see a lot of collaborative spacing. And so that is for students to be able to come and they can work together. There's power in each of the tables. And that's by design because we have phones and tablets and laptops that may need to be plugged up. So up here, you'll see where it says industry partners. As we establish our formal industry partnerships, they will all be displayed on this wall. So as we go through the building, you'll realize that it looks a little different from your traditional high school, and that's by design. We want these students to be preparing for life after high school. So life after high school may be a four-year college. It may be straight to industry and working in a career. It may be going to a two-year institution. Um, it may be going to the military. There are different things that that could look like, but we really want them to feel like this is something special for them. So if you think about this building as three separate corridors, the corridor that we're about to go down is all healthcare. So the building is divided into three pillars. We have healthcare and community services, maker industries, and emerging technologies. So this classroom right here is for our patient care pathway. So these are your students that want to go into healthcare, but they want to deal directly with patients. So you'll see over here, we have several beds set up. They look just like they would be set up in a hospital. In each bed is either a mannequin or a simulator. Um, each of the simulators vary in what they, the capabilities that they have. So we have some simulators that have cameras in the eyes so the student can see what they look like from a patient perspective. We have some simulators that you can pr program to have specific blood pressures or temperatures, um, things like that, a specific pulse, and the student can go check that. So this is really designed for students to get a hands-on feel for what it is like. Up here in the front of the classroom, we have a telemed cart. So this cart is a lot of times now you're seeing, especially with what's going on in the pandemic, where you can visit your doctor virtually. You can FaceTime with your doctor. You can say what's going on. This is that exact same technology. So we'll use it from an instructional standpoint. It allows us to have guest speakers in. It allows us to have the students be able to FaceTime or video chat with specialists. And so this is that exact same technology that we have here in the building. So a student that enrolls in the patient care pathway and completes all three classes as well as the required clinical hours will have the opportunity to sit for their CNA certification. So certified nursing assistant. Um, most nursing schools are gonna require a student to have that CNA before applying. So we, we're giving students the opportunity to sit for that credential in high school. All right, so this is emergency medical responder. So this is one of our high interest pathways as well. So you'll see over here, we have an ambulance simulator. Um, there's a mannequin that goes in it. It's a trauma how mannequin where we can make the mannequin have specific wounds. Um, we have an advanced life support mannequin over there. And we have over here is a bedroom setup. So everyone always asks us, why do we have a bedroom set up in, in the room? And the reason is because when you go get a patient, when you go on a call, they're typically not in a nice open place. So we can move the different mannequins and we can place them in the bed and we can place them between the bed and the wall or maybe the bed and the nightstand or even on the sofa or the chair and you may have to transport them in order to provide care. So we really want this to be as real life as possible for students. All right, so this next pathway that we're going to go into is for students that are interested in surgical technology. So this is your kid that wants to be in an operating room. Um, it's one of my favorite areas in the building because it's so real life. So here in Surgical Tech, you'll see we have the lighting system that you'll see very similar to what's in a facility. Um, we have two per area. We also have our anatomage table. So this table allows for dissections. It allows for um, students to practice suturing. We can stand it up or I can lay it flat. Students can do things like suturing or dissections. Um, I can start as superficial as skin level and I can continue to go deeper. So you'll see musculature, you'll see the skeletal system, see vital organs, blood vessels. So I can take it all the way down to that and I can add back parts if I need to as well. It's great for patient education too, so if you're a student that's thinking about explaining a surgery and they need to explain the complications of a surgery, 
having them play with something like this and work with it and say, okay, if we need to get to a specific body part, these are all the different structures that we're gonna have to get through to get to that specific body part, so. It has different genders, it has different races, different ages um, that the students can work with. It also has pre-programmed cases. So if we want to display what cancer looks like or something like that, there are some of those already programmed in here as well. So over here we are going into clinical lab. And clinical lab is the pathway for the kid that wants to be into healthcare, but they don't want to work directly with patients. So they want to be behind the scene. This is the kid that may want to be your pathologist. This is the kid that may want to work in the lab. So you'll see it's set up very similar to a science classroom. Um, there are microscopes, there are centrifuges, things like that. So next we're gonna go into phlebotomy. And so phlebotomy is your student that wants to work and do draw blood work. So they'll come in here and you can see we have the chairs that are set up just like if you were to go to the doctor and give blood. Um, and they'll work on trainers to begin with. So they will work on arms um, that they can draw blood from. We have a full body mannequin over here that we can also put blood in and they can practice sticks on it. So those are all of our healthcare pathways and so we're gonna move to the next corridor. All right, so we do not have a traditional cafeteria. And the reason we don't have a traditional cafeteria is because our students take their academics at Osborne High School. We also don't have a traditional learning commons. Osborne High School has a fantastic traditional learning commons. And instead of us doing a traditional learning commons, we went away from that and did something that gives you more of a college feel. We did put an instructional wall up in case a teacher wants to bring an entire class or students can come and do individual things. So this is our equivalent of a learning commons. Um, we call it our innovation destination. It's really for students to be able to come work and create. So our first year as we began to open, our largest pathway is cybersecurity. Um, so these are students that are interested in working with computers. One thing you'll notice when you look into this classroom is that you'll see this wire cage structure, and that's because this classroom is on its own network. So the desktops and the trainers in this classroom are on a separate network. And that's important because as we teach these students how to, how to code and hack, we wanna make sure that our Cobb County network is still protected. All right, so we're gonna to go to our business center. And our business center is really a multi-purpose space for us. Um, it allows for us to, if we wanna pull students in to do a large group something, or we want business and industry partners to come use our facility and they need a place to meet, that's what this space is for. All right, so we are going to go into energy and power. It is the one pathway that we did not open this school year, but we'll be opening it next school year so that we can make sure that we have the required business and industry partners that want to invest in this program. One thing you'll notice is that when you go and see a lot of energy and power programs, they have picked a specific portion of energy and power to focus on. We didn't do that. Um, so you'll see some places will only have solar or they may only have um, hydropower. We, we specifically got some of everything and that was by design. So the students can explore energy and power and figure out what they like the best. So now we're gonna go at automotive. Um, and we had some industry partners really help us with automotive. They came in and they said, this is what our shop has and this is what we're looking for. And so we made sure that we had that in our automotive lab. So what you'll notice in the trade and industries is that the instructional area is separate from the lab area. Whereas in healthcare, they're kind of mixed in together. They're all in a big space. And we did that by design for safety reasons. So we can make sure that students are not near anything that could hurt them or harm them um, while they're in the classroom setting. So you'll see there are some trainers out here. And then we have three bays in the lab area. So this is our hybrid trainer car. Um, it actually drives, you turn it on, that's how we got it in here, we drove it in here. But it allows the students to practice on not only traditional cars, but also hybrids. Um, we were intentional about this is maybe where the future is going, and so that they have some experience with that as well. You'll see over here that we have the machine that helps you to balance your tires. We have an alignment rack over here. Um, we have an engine trainer, so the students, you can turn on the engine and you can see what's happening in the inside of the engine. So in this corridor over here, we have all of our construction related fields. So you'll see they have their sign over here. So we've got welding, construction, um, and HVAC over here. So this lab is welding. Um, you have the instructional area here and the lab back there in the back. But what you see right here is a welding trainer. The trainer itself is actually on wheels, so we can move it. We can kind of collapse this down and we can move this around. So I'm just going to put in Tor as the name. But this is a welding trainer. It allows for MIG, TIG, and stick welding. And the students can practice welding, whether it's round to flat, 
or they can practice welding a seam here. So they put on the virtual reality headset and then they have the extension and then they can practice welding. Um, when they get done, it gives them a score. So it becomes a competitive thing, right? Some student gets a 90 and some kids like, well, I wanna beat their 90. So back here, we have 10 fully functioning welding booths. We have a plasma table. We have a drill press. We have a roller. Some of everything back here in welding. So this is the construction lab. So electrical, plumbing, carpentry, and then masonry as well that can happen in this area. Um, you see that he has the fabrications of the house and you can practice wiring there. He has some plumbing trainers, different electrical trainers. So in here we have a heavy equipment simulator. So he has different attachments that he can attach for it to be different forms of equipment and it has real life simulation feels. The chair vibrates, the hand, he has the handles um, and the foot pedals down there. This is everybody's favorite lab because it has everybody's favorite toy. So the next area that we're gonna go into is the HVAC lab. And what we found when we were talking to students is when I say HVAC, they typically don't know what I'm referring to. And so we have to explain to them that heating, ventilation, air conditioning, um, we even have some refrigerant stuff in this lab is super important. We live in Georgia. So it's good money to be made in HVAC because if it's hot, we're gonna pay the people what they tell us to pay. So back here, we have several different trainers. They have AC units, we have some heating units, ventilation, but outside, we also have four actual live units. And so that's for the student to work on the live units as well. But this is a field that we have realized that they didn't know much about. So as we explain it to students, they're very interested in it. So we will have someone on staff that's called our work-based learning coordinator. So after a student completes a pathway, they'll have the opportunity to do what we call work-based learning, which is internships with different businesses. And so this is that work-based learning room. This room also allows for students to kind of come in and create. You'll see there's a 3D printer, there's a die cut machine, there's a laminator, there's a large scale poster printer. The work-based learning coordinator can pull students to help them work on their resumes, their cover letters, their portfolios, so that they're really ready to go into business and industry when they get done.